We'll see when I say thank you. <coughs> I was here in February and I meant to make it back. I either did. And, uh, it was even better than it did in February. A lot of light. And um, on that topic of pain and um, you were describing like an example of the worst kind of life and a lot of suffering. That's my life. Yes. But there's a lot of joy. Yes. It's, so, so I kind of question this. Um, do you think there's some like divine intelligence that these painful, horrible things happen for some purpose, like for me to seek the end of suffering? Sure. Yes, it's all connected. It's all interrelated. Yeah. There are no separate events in their own category. Everything is tied into this big theme, this universal theme. Absolutely. And also, great suffering gives you the capacity for tremendous empathy. And what a gift that is. Compassion. and the understanding of the entire context or web of pain in which humanity is embedded on its manifest level. What the Buddhists describe as samsara, the Hindus describe as samsara, the wheel of birth and death. There's tremendous pain in that, unfathomable actually, like an ocean of pain. And yet there's an ocean of ne nectar juxtaposed right next to that. In fact, immersed in that pain, all one, all kind of interpenetrating. say it's a joke because that has a kind of macabre aspect to it like I was watching a film on South American natives primordial natives you know the ones who live in the rainforests and a mother was with her baby by the ocean and she uh, the ocean the uh, the river the huge river was it the Amazon and she left the baby just for a second and a huge boa constrictor came and took the infant. And within a few seconds, you got to see this woman wailing. It's like, I wouldn't call that a joke. Mm -hmm. Like the bonds that exist among human beings are so powerful that we are organismically, biologically tied to each other in love and reliance and surrender. We surrender to each other for food. The child surrenders to its mother to be fed. The mother literally feeds the child from its own body. There's something to be said about biological existence and the symbiosis and how that's really reflective of a higher love. It's not some base thing. It's not some mistake. So because of that and the capacity for loss and pain in this realm, I refrain from calling it a joke. I'll avoid that term because I also realize there's so much suffering in the room with me at any given occasion. Unless we really all get very high together, then I might exclaim that it's all a joke. <laughs> but only at the proper time. <clears throat> There's a time. So you feel the pain? No. Because oh, okay. I was having this conversation with a friend, and I'm just in so much joy. He's like, but I fall, man, it's suffering. Maybe it's more advanced or something. I don't know. But this is like, really a story, yeah, actually. A story. Yeah, it's a story outside of my own being. There's no suffering going on in my being. But within the fantastic regions of the mind, suffering happens even to me at the same time. And those are all realms of the mind. What's that? That's just the realms of story in the mind. It's a projected movie, but it's a movie in which my body is actually engaged. It's not like I'm involved in a movie that I know is a movie, and therefore I can sit back and witness it in that sense. You can have spiritual experiences that give you that taste where you're actually removed 
and you're watching yourself, you'll be shopping and you'll feel like there's a part of you that's just witnessing the whole activity of shopping and paying your bill at the register. But that's a temporary spiritual condition. It's not the highest spiritual condition. It's just a spiritual condition that gives you the knowledge that you are that which is beyond the world. Then, later on, you chop wood again. You come back into the world and you share your life with people. You share both your joys and your sorrows, knowing implicitly you're beyond it all. But being beyond it all does not prevent you, nor does it insulate you from the impacts of experience. There are different levels on which we can speak here. It's very complicated, actually, once you start talking about it. I'm, I'm wondering if I need any experience, but it turns into a, a, a... What's that? If I meet any experience, like if I go and investigate inside myself, yes. pain, you know, then I respond to it, all of a sudden it's blissful. Yes. So, It depends on your temperament. Some people will suffer a lot, and other people won't suffer much. It depends on all types of factors. But at the core, the existential reality, if you're enlightened, you look there and there's nothing. Nothing touches that. But you can't turn that into a hiding place, which is often what this gets generated into. It's like, oh, you're suffering, or you couldn't possibly be enlightened. It becomes a kind of macho criterion with which to judge whether people are really awake or not. You know that picture of Ramana Maharshi? The one here where he's looking? It's like you're always supposed to be in that state if you're in mind. <laughs> always and forever. You never stop looking into the camera. <laughs> but that's not how life is. Those are spiritual imaginings. It's our vulnerability to turn anything into a story and bloat it into a stereotype for the sake of fulfilling certain world philosophies that are either pro or anti-suffering, pro or anti-transcendence, pro or anti-participatory. At any given moment, if I look inside, there's just that ocean. But I don't think of that ocean as a place, you see. To me, it's in an instant that that's revealed. And it's not even in time that that's known. So therefore you cannot uh, lodge yourself within it and claim a status or status-based position. You can't acquire spiritual status over your own realization. You have to become empty again. Which means when I look at you, if you come in and you're suffering and there are tears in your eyes, I have to be an empty mirror with which your pain can reflect. I have to be your pain with you. And you experience the pain? I may. 